All right, I started recording. Thank you. Okay. And okay. Uh, okay. And um, so um, I call this meeting to of the TAC to order pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of open meeting law. This meeting of the TAC is being conducted by a remote participation. Um, so our first order, of the, so this is a call to order. Um, is there a public opinion? Let's see, do we have anybody? We have an attendee. Who's sure, that? we can let them in. Uh, Sigurd Nelson. Okay, I, I'm fine with letting you them in. You want to promote them? Sure. That's, that's fine. He's from Amherst Woods. Oh. Well, if they agree to be promoted. Um, I just did it and he's not moving. All right. Well, if they choose to not be promoted, that's their okay. choice too. <laughs> Would you like to just talk to him? Yeah. I mean, you can, Sigur, you can raise your hand if you want to speak okay. or, uh, oh, there you are. Did you want to say any? I mean, we do have public comment. Do you want to say anything at public comment? Yep. Or just listen? You just need to unmute. Yeah, you have to unmute yourself. If you do, hello? All right, well, then I guess we will proceed. OK, so the next order of business, if there is no public comment, is the update from uh, Guilford on this year's plan road and sidewalk projects. Yeah, so I'll just have, I just wanted to make a quick, um, oh. you know, explanation of that. But um, I had asked Guilford to come and just give us an update because every time I go anywhere in this town right now, it seems like there are a lot of construction projects underway and other DPW activity. And I know that, you know, the new Route Nine ones are the DOT, but the town is also really busy right now. And so I just wanted to get a sense of, you know, all the different projects that are slated to happen this construction season or could happen this construction season. So, all right, take it away, Guilford. There's not much going on. What? <laughs> Kidding me. Dude, so just the other day, DPW was on my street filling in potholes and as as all the traffic was being diverted off Route Nine through my street, and <laughs> there just is a lot going on. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. And so, uh, go ahead. All right. So what's going on this year is we're finishing up the last year's sidewalk project and community development projects. So and there's a crew working on Kellogg Street with that. So Taylor Davis, the contractor, is on that street doing sidewalks on Kellogg Street. And then once he's done, Warner Brothers will come in and pave that section. So it's just a little strip, it's not very much, but that's what's going on. The other project we have going on, which started today, is they're working on paving West Pomeroy and what I call East Pomeroy. We're leaving the middle of Pomeroy out because of the intersection work at 116 in Pomeroy. So that's going on. Um, the intersection work at Pomeroy 116 is, will restart soon, so that work will begin, and <clears throat> those three are going on at this time. There's another bid that's going out for crack sealing, another bid which is going out for pave, a second paving project this year, and then we also have the next phase of the sidewalk project. The next phase of the sidewalk project will be on North Pleasant Street, and it'll go from Meadow Street back almost almost to the Puffton, almost to Puffton, but it won't make it. It won't make it all the way to Puffton. Cool. Um, and then from there, that we will move the sidewalk crews to another sidewalk, which just can I, completely. Can I ask a question? Sorry, the um, North Pleasant is it both sides of the street, or is it one? The contractor is going to work on one side and we'll probably do the other side, but the plan is to do both sides from from okay. Meadow Street up close to Puffton. And now are they also doing that little 
spur on North Pleasant Street, you know, where there's like the the extra dry, the extra little road. The extra is that part road, of the, yes. the is that part of the sidewalk project? Yeah, the extra little road goes away. Okay. So those are going on. We also will probably put out to bid shortly the North Common project, which actually will re will repave and redo the Boltwood Boltwood Walk in front of Town Hall. And it'll also make some changes to Main Street and South Pleasant Street. And then we also have a project going out for old, well, North Pleasant Street next to Kendrick Park. So that section where we're widening it and adding parking is going to go out as well. So those are the big things going on. <clears throat> and then we have the water treatment plant, if anybody's interested, starts soon. And uh, <clears throat> some work at the wastewater plant starts as well. So there's other work going on also. Are those over it? Where those are the ones down by UMass? Is that the wastewater treatment plants down by UMass? Yes. Uh, where's the, the... the water treatment plant is on um, Amherst Road, just past the elementary school in Pelham. Oh. And then, um, so I was wondering, um, what's happening with the um, the crosswalk? projects like the ones that were part of that shared street and spaces grant from a few years ago like that included um along like triangle street and garcia's and things all, all the crosswalks are in and it's just okay. the of putting up the little flashy lights that are by right wanting. okay so is that probably going to get done this season two then yeah the that's, flashy a, lights? that's kind of fill in work right now oh, okay and you did get all the ones that you ordered, right? Didn't you order five or six sets? We've gotten those five are in, yes. Yeah, okay. Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think those crosswalks there are even more important now that there is so much foot traffic on, you know, Friday and Saturday nights right near Kendrick Park. It's so crazy. And it's crazy late too. And but, it goes and goes. I mean, there are so many, so many people walking around there. So I'm glad that at least, you know, there's one, at least one safe place for people to cross. Well, and I think too, that I mean, when I walk along like Triangle at night and there's the crossing at Prey Street, um, that's one of the places where I feel like if there aren't the if the lights aren't flashing, well, we don't have flashing lights yet. Um, but that um, cars are unlikely to stop yeah. and things. And it sort of feels the same along, you know, around the roundabout that when people come out of the roundabout, they're ready to go faster. Yeah. And so having those, I remember Ben Breger when he presented, but having the flashing lights near the roundabout on the south side and then also near Garcia's if that's still in the plan and that just seems like it would really help a lot um so cool has anybody checked out the new street light over I by went the and looked but it's so weird because it's much it's as bright but it's like what it, what's how is it different like it's obviously different. I mean, but what is the what are the actual differences? There's no globe around it, so yeah. there's no there's no reflection. It makes no. There's not a ball that's all right. up above and shoots down. Yeah, that's what it. But it looks like. I mean, it looks as bright on the ground. It's just not as bright yeah. everywhere else. Yeah, and you don't, see, <laughs> you, you don't see the little light. Yeah, it's really cool that day after you you sent that email or you told us or whatever i went out that night to check it out and i saw which light you were talking about it's only one of those right yeah it's just a trial of uh, we can i mean i still need we still need to buy lights from north pleasant i mean north common so if people really like it you should probably talk to your counselors and say we really like that light and it should be the new downtown standard you do when, see it. when I was wondering too, I mean, I know the street lights policy is still under review, but when I look at the lights that are in the um, 
but along the stretch of North Pleasant Street, you know, from the roundabout going south to say like Amity, like all those lights that have been put in, you know, the ones that we usually hang like wreaths and planters and stuff on. And then also the um, the ones at the, the Amity Street parking lot, like those those are more of the globes and they don't really have anything to um, stop the light from just like dispersing everywhere so much. Are, is it possible for those to be, I mean, those are nice lights otherwise, is it possible for them to be like retrofitted and have the light all go down? Because yeah, it's not it's not possible to retrofit them, but it's possible okay. when the light to go out to replace them with this fixture instead. Ah, uh, okay. Joe, you because, must be because like some of those aren't very um old, you know. So no, so yeah. Hey, Joe, you must be at the playground a lot. Have you noticed that the lighting that nearly almost every day? I think about it. I'm like, oh, when she's staying up late enough, she could certainly oh. play here at night, right? Which yeah. she would probably gladly do. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, but also the lighting. Like, so Guilford had mentioned at the last meeting that he had put in some different lights. There's one light that is different from the others. You should check it out the next time. If you ever go over there, walk over yeah, that. Yeah, I walked there uh, late at night. It's bright enough where I could see where I'm going, where I'm not tripping in any of the potholes, but it doesn't seem to disturb anything around it. So I think it's a good balance. Yeah, I do too, yeah. Yay, Guilford. Yay. Let people know. Thank <laughs> you for trying <laughs> out new things. Yeah. Cool. but. You you guys need to be talking to people saying you like it. All right, I will. We will. Talk. We will. will. Thank I'll you. Send an email to my counselor, ASAP. All right. Um, so thank you, Guilford, and that is really great to know. Um, and the next order of business are um, updates and discussion on other TAC items, including safe routes to school. Yeah. So. Um... I mean, this is sort of a light agenda, but I just you know wanted to get up to speed on some items. Um, the so yesterday, uh, Chris Lindstrom and I met with the new Western Mass Safe Routes to School coordinator. Um, she covers the four Western counties. Um, her name is Tori. She's very friendly and helpful, and um, she gave us a lot of information um, and also uh, offered to. Um, help us do some promotional and educational events in the fall if families are interested. So um, a couple things we talked about with her as is she did mention too that um, of all the Amherst Pelham schools that currently uh, Pelham Elementary and the middle school are not actually Safe Routes to School partners at this point, that they are just potential schools so they haven't established formal connections and she recommended that they do that all the rest of the schools have and oh and yeah so it was Pelham and um, the middle school and then um we talked about last year the San Francisco school coordinator came out and we tabled go ahead Kim um how uh, I have some connections at both of these places I'm just um both those schools that are not safer to school members um what does it entail to become part of that? You just need an interested. I think we just need just somebody to sort of sign up and say they're interested and they can be a like contact. That, an administrator? It could be an administrator problem. I mean, I think that would make the most what? sense. Okay. I mean, just, you know, long term, they could be a contact. Um, I got it. Okay. Thank and you. And I can forward to you, I'll forward to you the information. Okay. Thank you. Um, so one of the things uh, oh, we and, Andy has uh, a question. Andy, yep. maybe. Hi, Andy. Hi. Um, yeah, the question on safe streets to schools. Has anyone talked with the elementary school building committee regarding the safe streets and what we should be doing with the when we do the construction for the new school? That's a really good point. Um, so, so I had reached out um, to the elementary school building committee earlier. Um, I haven't talked, and I talked to Kathy then. 
I haven't really talked to anybody since. Um, I keep hoping that the town, if we establish a safe Exit School program that we could apply and hopefully be successful for one of the larger infrastructure grants, which allows you, which gives you up to 1.5 to $2 million for uh, intersection improvements within two miles of a school. Um, so, but you have to already be active in the Safe Route School program to be eligible for that type of funding. Um, so, um, so at this stage, we're still trying to get that going. And I've also heard some, a couple of people have contacted me about the idea of having connections, you know, with the, tr there's a, um, there's a walking path behind Fort River that goes over to Pelham Road, for example, um, and using that more. And then also, and I think there may be some wetlands there, so I'm not sure if it's possible, but also if there could be a walking path out from the Fort River School site out towards Route 9, because there is going to be the new affordable housing there. And we are proving. So did you... Uh... Have you looked at the design, the plans for that they had from the last round of work prior to the uh, vote in May 2nd? Uh, because what the design is, is very different. The current exit uh, point is going to be an entrance to the south side of the building, which is basically the bus drop off which is going to be separate from the current exit area, which is going to be the entrance and exit for people who are driving to drop their kids off by car and going to park. And uh, we expect a lot more traffic than previously. So there's a whole lot of changes and uh, the elementary school building committee will be working with uh, the architectural firm Tanisco Design and um, some of that uh, layout of the roadways is things that Tanisco is working on. I know that they've talked about moving the driveway point from where it currently is an exit a little bit uh, further south to get it a little bit further away from Main Street is much as they can within the land, land that's owned. But these are all issues where I think that your role as the uh, TAC uh, needs to, to some extent, intersect with these design issues that are currently being um, undertaken by the elementary school building committee. So um, I do encourage you to uh, think about talking to uh, Kathy to oh, see if her committee and your um, and the architect can work with you guys and what you know about Safe Streets to School, both as the grant program and just generally, and uh, make sure that uh, you don't get left out of the discussion process. Okay, well, thank you. I mean, that's helpful. I haven't really looked at the elementary school building project very much since uh, almost a year ago, you know, before there was the vote. And when we were doing, because we did the walk audits then, and we did the counts of how many people were walking to school. And that was the last time I actually actively looked at those. Um, yeah, and of course but, I was looking more at how they were designing the roadways in and out and the fact that they're dividing it into, and this is not unusual for schools to do that, to separate the bus drop off yeah. side from sure. the yeah. public Well, and that's what Wildwood and Crocker both do that currently. Um, yeah. So I do, have a, really question. I do yeah. have a question though about when I had um, been listening in on the elementary school building committees previously, it sounded like Donesco, they were focused, all their focus was on like within the site, you know, in the movement of vehicles within the site and not very much looking outside of the site or any of the approaches. So I is that, that still the case? Uh, that and is they, my impression. Right, I and then because- talk, But we need to work it together. No, of course. Don't. Yeah. But and for the MBS, MSBA grant and every, it's like that's just site specific. And then 
that's where you need to look for like other sources and other planning to um, look at those nearby intersections. Yeah, I mean, I'm concerned uh, about the location in the in the morning in particular. Uh, there's a lot of traffic that's coming from Belchertown in the direction of UMass that goes in front of Port River. There's a period of time when between the school, the current school as it's currently configured uh, and the, you know, trans just generally the driving to, to the university gets pretty, make that area get pretty gummed up. And when the school has more students and more buses, more- And potentially uh, more kids walking to school. Potentially, right. except that you've got such a much larger area so the kids who are currently at Wildwood are yeah. not likely to be walking. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But still, you know, with that little cutoff by the bank, like you're right, the people coming from Belchertown, you know, they turn that right on that near the little bank that, that bypasses the mm -hmm. that four way intersection. It's very dangerous, you know, and with the increased traffic, it's going to be very hairy. So I kind of wonder if, I mean, I feel like almost these kinds of emergent issues are almost past what the kinds of thing, you know, we think about like what's existing and I feel like this is something that the town should study more carefully, like maybe with a professional because, because these seem like real important issues considering we're moving a lot of our elementary school students to this one location that does get very, that has poor, poor walking access and really only driving access. And that's going to increase substantially. Yeah, I think, I, I think uh, that's a real concern. And if, if people are only looking on site and not thinking about, you know, there are two intersections, two main signaled intersections on either side of the school in very close proximity. Right? It's, gonna, it's gonna really change the flavor of yeah, that. I'm, I'm sorry we lost Guilford because no, he's probably well, thinking he's around. about it. But um and I mean there is a project now he's still here. Oh, hi, Guilford, Guilford there is that project on Route 9 um Belchertown Road you know with the sidewalks and things and is that actually I mean, the monies for that has been reward, awarded already, but it's yeah. not actually like going out to bid or. <clears throat> um, or... There's there's two projects. Okay. There's two two projects in the area. They're in design. Um, we do have money appropriated for them. They'll probably go out. <clears throat> one will probably go out late this year, and the other one will probably go out next year. But they have nothing to do with the intersections. But they are like improving the sidewalks along, right? And the crossings. I mean, wasn't some of it access to Colonial Village? One one is on Route 9 and improves the sidewalk along Route 9. And that's it. Just the sidewalk. Okay. So did you hear what I was raising about the traffic access in that area, and particularly in the morning, and what it's going to be like with the new school? It's going to be fun. Um, the... That there is there is discussion that's been going on about them, about both intersections. Uh, there's been some discussions about getting rid of things in the in the intersections, changing the intersections. But they're like you say, the school school building committee and the school designers are not focused at all on them at all. On those at all. On those, they plan to have a driveway connect to the public way, and that's all they plan to do. So anything that's done to improve even the connections to the driveways has to be done by the town. And there's some discussion going on, and but it's probably going to be after, it'll probably be, it probably won't happen the same time the school is being built. Yeah. So I don't know. I guess uh, I'm going to leave it because I can't say anything. I have nothing to contribute. But yeah. I would think the um, tech should at least give some consideration to whether you have any comments, even just the one that you said that there should be some sort of 
task force. I really, yeah. you were otherwise. I think, I feel like, like this is an issue that is, it, it's a very big issue. And, and, and the fact that those intersections are so close by, and you're right, there's going to be an increase, a huge increase of traffic on that tiny stretch of road in front of the school, right? Um, who knows what that's going to be like? I, I feel like this is above what we could possibly like anticipate, at, at least during the school, you know, the, during um, the start of school, which coincides with the start of, you, you know, people coming into work. Yeah. So maybe it's an issue we should raise with um, people on the school committee. Uh, well, and also I think with the counselors and, you know, get it on the yeah. radar. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. And I mean, Guilford, I think it, you know, as I mentioned before, um, while you're waiting for the quorum, but that idea with that UMass um, or UMass had contacted the town about, you know, possibly getting money um, to do some analysis of different intersections or something. I mean, um, maybe that could, maybe there could be a possibility with that intersection or something. So, I mean, yeah. I'll follow up with you and Jason and, um, and things, so. Yeah, they sent, they sent an email this week. We just haven't got back to them. Yeah, no, it's an email. I, I thought their email was a little confusing and they have like some specific ideas. So um, I will follow up too. I know you guys are busy. But um, basically UMass, I mean, um, there were some researchers that I work with at UMass who were interested that there's a lot of um, federal funding available to do different types of safe streets projects. And so they were they were doing outreach to some towns, including Amherst, um, about um, that, that basically that the UMass people could help apply for grants and do the work and everything. Cool. Um, and that the grants would have to be submitted through municipalities through Amherst, but um, it could be a good partnership. So we'll see if it goes anywhere. Joe has a question. Yeah, so uh, I'm just starting with the Fed Reserve Bank in Boston uh, as an intern or hopefully as a, a hiring track for community development. So just getting started, but they're they're always talking about a big bucket of money in the fall. So if you like, I could bring any updates for that. That might be helpful. Big buckets of money sound great. <laughs> Big Are you talking not money. specifically transportation money or just in general? Well, I mean, it could be. It would have to intersect okay. with uh, other right. stakeholders, but it, they're very creative. They're getting very creative for the fall. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, where applications will be opening up. So I'll just bring some more information. Sure. If we can do that. That sounds great. Um, Thank you. Okay. So the next, um, so so um, yeah, I think the agenda item we came up with for the uh, uh, includes um, potentially Tracy getting in touch with the school building committee and mm -hmm. sure that they um, are thinking about um, not just ending at the end of their driveway, but no, that, I mean, and they're they're aware of it and things. I just yeah. haven't been in touch with them, and and yeah. as you said, I mean, we're sort of limited, but um, I think it. I, I really think it's it. a kind of bigger thing. Oh, than, for sure. Yeah. I don't want to be in charge of that because there are little kids who are dependent on, on our 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 you know suggestions. I think I feel mm -hmm. like this should be a profession. Th this should really right. be evaluated professionally that's my personal opinion because it seems like it's going to be it could be a problem well and with the um elementary school building committee before um the site was chosen there were some traffic studies in that area right so i think that they may have included um i mean they focused a lot on current conditions and they also did some projections of future conditions but i believe there are some recommendations in that report i'd have to go back and look at it it's a couple hundred pages long because it included all the raw data of the traffic collection. I mean, Guilford, do you recall what that report had in it? <laughs> but there, there was a quick report. Um, we are talking to another consultant to come in okay. and do analysis. Um, okay, got it. I think that's a great idea. Um, all right. Okay, so our our next item of business is the Act to Reduce tra Traffic fatal Fatalities and TAC 
intersection with oh, oh yeah sorry before we move on um just with the safe routes to school so the projects that we talked about with um this coordinator tori um in terms of trying to launch in the fall is one um do an outreach event as part of the um the back to school event that last year it was held at kendrick park previously it's been held on the common and um and table there and um and maybe do things like, for example, um, Mass Bikes right now is giving away bike lights. You know, have some like giveaways. And we talked about maybe doing some helmet fitting or something just to, last year we had a table and we talked to people and we signed people up. But if we could do some more interactive stuff and have some swag and get people excited. And we did sign a bunch of parents up. So uh, Chris and I want to follow up with those parents. Um, so that's one thing we want to do. And the other thing we're interested in, too, is um, that she was promoting is that they do have a curriculum that they use in the elementary schools. A lot of times they meet with second grade classes and uh, it's just about pedestrian safety. And it talks about they actually do some kind of demonstrations about how to cross safely and things like that. Um, it's a 20 to 30 minute demo. Uh, they, you know, they could come and they do meet typically with one class at a time, but they could do like a whole school and then maybe we get them to do all the elementary schools um, or at least, you know, most of the second grades in the three schools. Uh, and they also offer some professional development to teachers or to, you know, PE teachers or other. Wait, who is this? It's, it's so this is the Safe Reach to School program. Oh, it's South, South Massachusetts. South Coast, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they cool. will do it, but then what they want is they because they cover the whole state and they don't have that many staff. Mm -hmm. They do want they do encourage people to sign up and do some of the courses they offer on how to do those demos. Oh, I see. So that they don't continually have to do it, you know, for each year. I mean, they could kick it off for us, and then the idea would be to build capacity in districts so that the next second grade class, you know, would could do it in house or things like that. And again, it's just, you know, 20 to 30 minutes. So if there were volunteers who were interested or or mm -hmm. PE teachers or other teachers who were interested. And they also have one that they do with bike education. They tend to do that with slightly older students. Sometimes they even do it with like middle school or high school students. Um, so those are the two kind of pieces we were talking about. We were also talking about doing something around one of the international like car free days or some other type of event uh, in the fall tying into one of those national international days to encourage other modes and um and i personally i mean one thing i'm interested in is like for example and maybe this is because i had been a crocker farm parent but when i i think about when the pomoy village intersection is finally finished and we have the roundabout there and with the RFBs and the crossings and everything is maybe you're doing some kind of walking school bus out there just to get a, you know, a big group of people, a good group of parents and kids out there to um, just show them how the intersection works and things like that. And, and we could even do the same with, you know, once we have some of the more of the RFBs at some of the mid block crosswalks, you, we could think about other intersections near or mid block crosswalks near um some of the schools you know do some kind of meet and walk like for example uh right to go to the high school or the middle school or something mm -hmm. um that's cool so. i like the idea of um having second graders like um you know ha have these safety lessons i think and i could see that um you know I mean, that's so empowering for kids to be able to actually formally learn these kinds of things, you know, um, just like the, 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 um, I don't know how you all, I mean, maybe not everyone has had that experience, but my kids really got a lot out of the fire safety program at school. Um, just being empowered. Your kids haven't done this yet, Joe, but it's really powerful. And the kids all really like it. It's learning you know, basic fire safety and, and, um, it, it's somewhat, it definitely was empowering for my kids and they make a plan and they, you know, it's a, it's a regular thing. And then they, they learn the drop and roll and, you know, 
I don't know. It's really, it's really powerful. And I could imagine that something like this would also, you know, that they maybe learn in PE class is also a really powerful, you know, and they never forget this stuff, right? Because it's so important. No, right. Well, those are, I mean, they, in those cases, right, they're doing like a longer curriculum, right? They do that over a while, but like these are just one time, but. um, No, I could imagine. for sure. They're crossing the, crossing the street without their parent, maybe for the first time at, or learning without their parent for the first time ever, you know? Well, and bike rodeos can be a great event too. No, I remember. Um, I mean, I've hosted bike rodeos. I know the police department, the Amherst police, they used to have a bike rodeo every year. Um, They're super. And I don't know, Joe, if you're aware of this, but out, and I don't know if it's still open, but over in Northampton, like near Look Park, there's like a safety village. It's like a small scale kind of. Yeah, where where kids and you actually used to, I mean, it might still be open. It was run by the Northampton Rec Department. But you can even sign up for camp and like go to like Safety Village Camp. And it's just this like where you learn. It's sort of like an extended bike radio. She's event. climbing. Is it she's still open, Gilford? Now. I mean, she, she, she's ready. I would love to take her there. No, it's cool. <laughs> so, yeah. No, but I mean, all of these things need volunteers, right? And so, I mean, Kim has high school students. I have high school students. And um, we need to recruit younger people. <laughs> so, but yeah. Cool. Thank you. No, I, I love those ideas. Um, and so, you know, in terms of the next item on the agenda was potential future collaborations with ECAC. And uh, so when they talked to us, right, they had talked about Safe Reach to School too. So I would love to um, connect them with some of these ideas. Uh, and also we're working, of course, on the bike map and ped map. And Eva thought she might join. Oh, she did come. So um, Guilford, could you elevate her too? Trying. Okay. I did it twice and I haven't got she hasn't moved yet. All right. Well, she will, I guess. <clears throat> she has to accept, so she wasn't paying. No, I understand. Much. Yeah. And um so I think I mean I was excited to hear that they were interested to work with us and what I is the, uh, remind me what the ECAC is? Well, so it's the energy like conservation, like climate action. Oh, yeah. right. They, are the they have that act. They yeah, have the yeah. plan. And um, right, right, right. So, and I yeah. think Stella D, who came to talk with us, somebody had mentioned that she has young children, too. So, again, if we can, you know, build some of those connections, that would be great. Um, with the. So I also had this update about the act to reduce traffic fatalities and the possible TAC outreach. So I had read in the paper about um, how these bike riders in Springfield that they all put fun needles on their bikes that had the four foot like with flat you know with stickers with the four foot distance and they did a ride (laughs) and so I don't know you know when I was younger I used to go on lots of rides like that but even I mean we could do a ride or we could also maybe I was thinking we could even you know table or something at like the farmer's market and just show people what it looks like I know even among my colleagues and I mean, at the UMass Transportation Center, including people who work with the state DOT all the time, like I did hear from somebody and said, well, I didn't know that was the law now. So um, really get the word out about that um, when passing these slower moving road users, you are supposed to leave a four foot distance. You can cross a yellow line to do so. And then, and you can also, I mean, part of the act to reduce traffic fatalities too also includes um, the requirement that bicycles have rear lights. And so what Mass Bike has been doing is they have been distributing lights as well. Um, so to you know connect some of that. Um, and I was curious, I mean, too, if there's ways to connect with some of what UMass is doing. You know, if there's UMass activities either. Well, so right now, May is Bike to Work Month. And we used to, years ago, we had these active bike to work week event in Amherst. There were some, they used to be held on the common, but then there were also some at UMass. This year, the Pioneer Valley bike to work week seems like it's mainly based down in, in uh, Hamden County, Springfield and Holyoke and things. So I did hear that the mayor of Holyoke is going on a bike ride as part of it and uh, with um, some activists and things. Um, but 
but maybe we can have some kind of event at UMass too. Yes, Eve. Um, so um, I'm planning an event at UMass that, um, yeah, you know about Tracy, but just FYI, um, it'd be great to have the TAC a little bit involved. And um, it, it's, it's uh, I have no details because that has to be planned, but it'll be in September and it'll be, uh, you know, kind of awareness about how to use and be safe with alternative modes of transportation and also driving around alternative modes of transportation. So we're hoping it's going to be like a one to three day event um, with tables and stuff to sell and handing out lights and reflectors. And maybe we can get a, like a used bike store to sell bikes. Anyway, we haven't figured it all out yet, but um, the plan is to the plan is to plan an event in September. With whom? Um, who, well, who are, who else? I mean, who's organizing it other than you? Um, I'm I'm sort of the main organizer right now. Okay, okay, okay. I um, thought it was with a, another group or something. The, the group is the multi-union group known as ESAM, the Environmental Social Action Movement Transportation Circle. Um, but it's like all the different unions together with student groups working together in ESAM. And so anyone who's a union member or a student at UMass can be part of this group. And we're going to um, meet it, uh, with one of our members is Ezra Small. So he's the sustainability coordinator. So we'll meet with him to see if we can plan the event. Um, and that oh. meeting is going to be on the 31st of May to plan the event. Um, I'm also talking with my neighbor about trying to do a bike to school event um, on the bike and walk to school day. So anyway, uh, I'll see if we can move forward on that. But yeah, I heard you you talking about that, Tracy, but. Yeah, so before we came, I don't know if you were in the audience yet, but um, I was talking about because uh, Chris Lindstrom and I had talked to the Safe Routes to School coordinator um, for Western Mass yesterday. Her name is Tori. And um, for example, she had suggested that I reach out to Jess, uh, Mass Bike, about getting we we would like to table and have some you know activities and things at the back to school event that the Amherst schools typically have the day before school starts so that this year will be on August 29th okay, and yeah. I was going to reach out to Mass Bike I mean I do know somebody on the board but then there's also Jess who I think is lives in Northampton yeah I've been in touch right? with Jess and, and so too. um yeah. oh yeah so Kristen um, so Kristen had given me some of those bumper stickers about the four feet, but then also um, in terms of um, like getting a supply of bike lights and things like that. So if you've already reached out to them, that's great, but not, not I'm happy to ask it's them not, for not, more. Not reasonable, okay. but, but you might just so. like, it seems like, you know, since sometimes people get repeat requests from different people to just say, incidentally, I'm also coordinating with Eve on this or something like right, that. Yeah, Eve yeah. knows about, I know you, anyway. Well, or I can CC you or something, but yeah. But just um, if they could, because it sounded, Tori was saying that she's been working with Jess quite a bit and, um, you know, it's easy to get like a supply of lights and and that's what Mass Bike has been raising funds for, so. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, that's a great idea. And is it, do you have a day for them, like back to, back to whatever, what, walk bike to school day in the fall? It's is usually October, in, but no. In October, okay. Uh, the week is like the first week in October. Yeah, I can pull it up. I'll pull it up. And no, it it's, up. yeah, no, I remember. I think last year was October 4th or something, but um, yeah, that's fine. Um, okay. So Great. that we can continue to do that. It is fun to do events with kids. And um, and if that's something too, that the ECAC committee is interested in, that would be great to build our capacity. And also I would love to tap into um, like volunteers at the high school like the environmental club or yeah. other groups who might be interested. Um, I don't Kim, do you think that that would, do you think yeah. those students would be interested? I think <laughs> so. I mean, you know, yeah, I have kind of my own child who refuses to walk or <laughs> bike the, um, you know, paltry less than half mile to school. So, but Nonetheless, kids. I know there are kids <laughs> who are more environmentally minded at the high school. I'm, I'm, I'm going to see. I know uh, I'll find out who the leaders are for that um, yeah. next year, and, and and I can ask them about their interest in doing that kind of stuff. So wait, you'll have a senior next year, is that right? 
No, I have a, I can find out who the, I know. No, the, but your daughter, do- your, your, kids my daughter is a senior now. And no, but I thought your other daughter is she, she, is will, she two years she younger or be she'll be oh, okay. Okay. Got it. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. But I'll look into that. Cause I think it's great to get them involved. Yeah. Cool. Um, do you have any recommendations for bike purchase? This might be an offline conversation. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> for what? I don't know if there's any, any good bike shops in the area. My wife and I were looking. I like yeah. the idea before of getting getting some bike stores to some kind of event to get more. Yeah, no, that would be great too. Yeah, some of, some of our bike stores have closed, but um, I mean, I like some- Laughing Dog, and a lot of people like Hampshire. Yeah, I I agree with both of those, and I also the um the ski and bike store is also really great like the guy who owns that one out by hillside the pizza shop i don't know on route nine he's also in hadley that one is really great too Isn't that valley bikes or something yeah that oh, yeah yeah that's a really great one but i like personally i always go to laughing dog that's where and they have an upstairs with little kids stuff like he'll hook you up totally yeah, yeah they're super helpful yeah, and I wonder too. I haven't heard anything about um, Valley bikes. Has anybody heard anything? Feel free. You mean the anything? bike chair? Yeah. I had a long conversation with Ezra Small about it. So, oh, okay. about three weeks out of date, but I can tell you what I heard then. Well, I mean that there's like financial issues and stuff. Is it gonna? Is this still going to be here? It, it probably will be back in September. Okay. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. They were trying. They were trying to get it up in the spring, but like, if they didn't get it up in time for the students, then they weren't oh, yeah. have enough money to sure. make it. So yeah. So if they didn't get it up by now, they won't get it up till till the students get here again. Well, yeah. One thing I really liked too is that they were offering it. Like it seemed really popular in Holyoke and other places, you know, for um, utilitarian biking and things. So for people who are transit dependent. So. I ran into a student um, at the Energy Transition uh, Symposium who said that they did a study of Valley Bikes and most people who use it are using it for recreation. So it's actually not being used very much for commuting. Oh, that's interesting because I see the ones down by um, by the, the housing, like the big apartment places down by Groff Park. Those seem to be used quite frequently. Like, Oh, that's cool. And yeah. I think, it'll, and students were using it. I mean, not just for recreation, but like around the UMass campus, when the UMass campus is big, but then also, you know, from like biking along University Drive to get to like Big Y and things. Yeah, and, so maybe we need some fine tuning. I mean, data. I would be interested in that survey because mm-hmm. I think there are, there were a lot of utilitarian uses. They, right. had, they had access to all the Valley Bike data. Oh, I'm just so, curious. Um, okay. yeah. No, no, no. I mean, I don't mean to say that that's bad, but, but it, right. there'd probably be some fine tuning. You know, you could look at particular areas and yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah. I think, I think you could get them to do quite a bit. True. <clears throat> um. All right, so moving along. So we have um, revisions to the proposed streetlights policy. You know, it is still being reviewed by the Transport Town Outreach and Services Committee, TSO. It's been before them for a few different meetings. Um, At the last meeting, which I think Andy was not able to attend, but um, they did talk about um, the idea of dimming the lights in the village centers in downtown after 11 p.m. or at least in the downtown area after like the last bar closes and things. Um, I had written just with some of my personal concerns just about the pedestrian safety of that, um, particularly when people are leaving, say, the downtown. I mean, as Kim mentioned early on in this meeting, it is really busy downtown at like I mean, so, and I noticed too with the buses, the buses run late on Thursdays and Fridays and Saturday nights and things do not shut down anywhere near 11. (laughs) It's like 12 or one or, and that also that, you know, when, when people, when the people who have been at all these bars downtown, which are just packed, (laughs) but when packed, but when people leave them at night and then they have to go back to their neighborhoods and we're glad that they're walking and not driving, but that they're not necessarily walking along these in the village centers themselves. And so that the lights when they would walk to their neighborhoods would be dark again. Yeah. Um, So 
Um, so anyway, so there were, I am, um, Shalini Balmil at that meeting, she did, she did suggest that the sponsors of the policy get some input from the chamber and from the the bid, the business improvement district for downtown, just to see how their members would feel about, you know, dimming the lights in those areas. Um, and so I suppose that that will be on the TSO agenda in June. They were supposed to have a meeting tonight and that meeting was canceled, TSO, and I think their next meeting is the first. And then also last night, um, the sponsors of the policy, Councillors Henneke and Devlin Gothier also went to the planning board um, to talk, to present on the policy to the planning board members. Um, the planning director had requested that they come and provide some info. And they did mention at that time that they see the streetlights policy as just sort of a first step in looking at other lighting policies or potential lighting bylaws in town. I'm including, you know, moving on to ones about location, but then also if there were going to be restrictions on private lighting as well. So um, anyway, so that's sort of a long-term thing. And the planning director was interested in having the planning board here just because when the planning board is reviewing uh, building development plans and site plan and so on that they look at lighting. So, um, okay. And then other public way related updates. I don't know of any right now. Um, I had contacted the TSO back before the um, act reduced traffic fatalities took effect in April. And I mean, there are, there are a number of components in there that could be interesting to the town to look at implementing, including you can ask for lower speed limits on state roads within your jurisdiction. That's one hmm. thing. Um, so, hmm. anyway, so we'll see what that happens. And then, so that's all from me. It's maybe a short meeting. Yeah. Um, um, do we need to talk about um, when we might schedule? Um, yeah, let's do that because the summer gets busy and. Uh, so, I mean, lately we've only, we don't really have that many referrals per se. So it's felt, it's felt okay to meet once a month. Yeah. And, um, and Kim, I do need to follow up with you too about the um, maps. Yep. Um, and Eve and I had talked about them. So, um, but in terms of in terms of June, what do we think? Um, I mean, we could meet. We could plan to meet on the ninth, assuming that we we could hold the ninth. No, June ninth is a Friday. Oh, sorry, the 8th. I meant the 8th. Does that work? Yeah, that could work for me. Does that work for other people? Joe, will that work for you? That are you going to be in Boston this awesome. summer? Or are you going to no, be? No, so I'm going to be doing I can't virtually. hear you. Uh, oh, sorry. But, uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. I can hear you. I couldn't can hear you before. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, good. cool. Uh, so I'll be remote with my internship. Okay, so I'm, okay, good, got with, it. I'm good with yeah, that, okay. but I'll be in, in Finland. Uh, oh, nice. In June. So just a different timeline, but the sun will still be up. So you know, <laughs> tell the difference. So. Cool. Uh, that's very exciting. So tack on Yeah, we're excited. Yeah, so let's plan on that for the 8th. And then, I don't know. So June is a month that has five Thursdays. <laughs> uh, Should we do lucky? that? Lucky us. First week in July, then, or maybe not, because that's the week of the fourth, the thirteenth. Or do we want to do? I mean, if we wanted to have a second meeting, we could meet on the 29th If we thought that there was anything. I mean, I I'm not gonna. I will not be here on the. Okay. Time. Okay. Yeah, I'm actually I'm actually traveling on the 29th. Um. Yeah, I guess if, you know, if things come up and we're, our input is requested, we can meet more often. Um, but all of these Thursdays are pretty like busy days for me. 
um, in June. And so I guess we could plan to meet. So the first, um, the first Thursday in July is the sixth. So we yeah, can just put that down as a as a potential meeting date as well. Sure. I just wonder if people might, because Tuesday, it's the fourth is a Tuesday, if that's like a week that people will be around. Oh. Yeah. You know? I guess I, I could I could ask the members if I mean that works for have a quorum. We don't have plans because both my kids are away um that week but um <laughs> but I also think that people might just be taking off like through the fourth yeah you know yeah I mean? sure. like because like the fourth is a Tuesday so people right. could take off like Friday Uber Saturday Uber. Sunday Monday too <laughs> then be yeah. back so that's fine but so okay so let's let's tend to do let's tentatively say that and uh, I'll just let people know if there's other things that you know our input is requested and I do think that the street lights policy will continue to move ahead and um sure. the Tori who I met with yesterday she did want to meet with Chris and I again in June but I think we might try to push that back into July and uh so okay all right so um and it sounds like we have some great ideas for some outreach you know late summer and fall um, did you want to just did you okay. want to talk about the any TAC appointments so I put that on the um, agenda just because we do have two members appointments that are up um, effectively June 30th. Um, so, you know, in Amherst, most of the committees have, um, you know, um, rolling appointments in terms of like some people, some members appointments end every year. Um, and uh and it can take a while for new people to be appointed. And so I think well, who's up? the people who are um, expiring, but are, who are welcome to stay are Stefan and um, and Chris Lindstrom. Oh. So, um, so Stefan, if you want, you, you, um, you can always just affirm that you want to continue to be on the committee and you can let uh, the town know. And then uh, the town manager, this is the town manager committee. So the town manager will be working on doing reappointments and new appointments for committees. And he's already started to do some of that, you know, starting for starting in July. Um, and because there are so many committees, it takes quite a while. And typically the policy has been that people can continue to serve until those appointments or reappointments take place though people ha also have the right to just say I'm done and uh and that's what Bernie did last year right because so we had that vacancy temporarily until we got the new appointment so okay and uh but also you know if people know other people who are interested too yep it's always great um and I don't know if Tate is going to uh continue to stay on the committee too but I hope so right but isn't he moving well, so he's actually been temporarily living not in Amherst. Oh, wow. Okay. Because of a housing situation mm -hmm. that was unlivable. <laughs> so um but he does hope to he does hope to be back in Amherst. Got it. Okay. Um, so is that it? Or I think that's it. Okay. Do you have anything else? Guilford or Andy, do you guys do you, Andy, do you have any TSO or council news to share or for anything no no we're all excited to have you're so busy doing all your projects yeah so well thank you thanks to you, you and your crews already so okay all right so, okay yes, thank, you all. thank you thank you good night, good night. Thank you. bye, bye.